God, I touched Jesus. Amen. I'm thanking the Lord that I will never be the same. Amen. And I don't know about you here this morning, but if you've got a need this morning, if the Lord is speaking to your heart this morning, the greatest thing you'll ever do for yourself is be able to get in this altar and ask God to be able to help you to save you and to set you free. Amen. And I believe with all my heart that he can do that this morning. Amen. Well, that's chapter number 14. Let's all stand in reverence to God's word as we just take just a few moments to look into his word here this morning. Acts chapter number 14. Begin reading in verse number 8, if you will. The Bible says there sat a certain man in Lit at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on my feet. And he leaped and he walked. Amen. I want to just ask you a question here this morning. Do you have the faith to be healed? Yeah. Do you have the faith to be healed? Let's pray and ask God to help us one more time. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be in your house this morning. God, I pray that if there's somebody here today that is lost without God, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would help them to see their need for Jesus. God, I pray, Father, this morning that, Lord, if there's somebody here that needs a touch from heaven, Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, for the song that Emily sang there just a few moments ago. Thank God that I touched Jesus, and thank God I've never been the same. And so, Lord, I just pray here this morning that, God, you have your way. Lord, I pray, dear God, that if there's somebody that's troubled, God, I pray for somebody that's walked up in this building here today, uh, that, Lord, maybe the devil's had them in the box and ring all week long. Lord, I pray that God some way the Lord do and help them. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Be with us in these few moments. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all so much. As I begin to read through the book of Acts, I can't help but see when I get over to chapter number 13, how that Paul and Barnabas, how that they were called out of the church there in Antioch. And the word of God tells you and I that as these two individuals were called, and uh, they were the, the, they laid hands on them and began to pray over them, that these two great men of God began to build churches and establish churches all across the different lands. And as I read through the word of God, I see, my dear friend, that as they went into some of these places, I want you to know that they were not welcome every place that they went to. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but listen, when we walk up into Capital City Baptist Church, uh, I'm telling you, Brother Kenny, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God's here. Amen. And this is a welcoming place. Amen. But I want you to know that there are missionaries that you support. And men of God, my dear friend, that you support, I can tell you that they're not so welcome in the place that they're preaching the word of God. Amen. Well, we thank God for the faithful resolve of the man of God. Thank God for the faithful individuals who will carry the bloodstained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May I say to you, as we get to Acts chapter number 14, we see that Paul and Barnabas, that they went into Iconium, and the word of God tells you and I that as they went into that place, that Paul began to preach the word of God. And thank God there were hundreds of individuals that came to the realization that they were lost without God and needed Jesus. Amen. And I want you to know that the word of God does tell you and I that they were ran out of this place as well. But I'm thankful again for these two traveling evangelists, these two missionaries, thank God, that had the result, my dear friend, that in no matter how hard it got, no matter how tough it may seem, thank God, they still continue to go to preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. And the word of God tells you and I that they came into this place called Lystra. And I want you to notice, if you will, when they walk into Lystra, I want you to notice the man's predicament that we see. In verse number 8, the word of God says, And there sat a certain man at Lystra. The Bible says he was impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked. When I look at the word impotent, it just simply means someone who is lacking of power or ability. Yeah. It is someone who is weak, my dear friend. Someone who is lacking bodily strength. Literally, they were physically helpless. And I notice the word of God tells you now that the Bible says he had been this way from his mother's womb. Amen. May I say to you, there are some of you that are sitting in this building here today. My dear friend, listen, you may have walked up in this place, lost without God, named the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 1, he describes your condition that you were dead in trespasses and in sins. Oh, but I'm thankful for the night. Hallelujah. That the Lord Jesus Christ, that he quickened me, that he made me alive, that he saved me. Thank God. And he set me free. Amen. 
man. Oh, may I say too, there's another condition that we see about this man. The Bible says that he had been this way from his mother's womb. He was impotent. The Bible says he was lacking power. He was lacking ability, if you will. But the Word of God also says that he sat. Amen. He sat. But oh, may I say to you, when we think about somebody who is setting, it's somebody who has decided that they're going to reside there. They have decided that they are going to dwell there. And may I say to you, listen, there are some of you sitting in this building here today that you're just like this man in this story. May I say to you, listen, it's been a long time since God came by, my dear friend, and blessed you. It's been a long time, my dear friend, since God, uh, since you felt the presence of the Lord. It's been a long time since you felt the Spirit of God beckoning your heart as you understand and realize that you're lost without the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you've walked up in this building here today, perhaps your marriage is on the rocks. And, and listen, you're trying to figure out how in the world she's going to make it through the marriage. You're, she, you're trying to figure out how he's going to make it through the marriage. May I say to you, thank God, I'm glad that there's strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May I say to you, listen, maybe it's been a long time since you came to the house of God and joined the the Lord. Maybe it's been a long time and you decided to set, my dear friend, and not pick up the Word of God and find out what God's got for you in His Word. Maybe it's been a long time since you prayed, my dear friend. Maybe it's been a long time since you got a loan of God. Maybe it's been a long time since you worshiped the Lord. Maybe it's been a long time since you just threw up your hands and made the praise yeah. the King of Kings yeah. and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. May I say to you, my dear friend, yes, you have walked up in this building with the crippling effects of the devil some good news here today. But thank God, God can help you, my dear friend, through the circumstance that you're going through here today. Oh, may I say to you, listen, my friend, I'm not, when I ask you the question here, do you have the faith to be healed? Listen, I'm not talking about Benny Hinn kind of faith. I'm not talking about Jesse Duplantis kind of faith. I'm not talking about Creflo Dollar kind of faith. My dear friend, I'm talking about good old fashioned Holy Ghost faith, my dear friend, that God can help you in the circumstance morning. May I say to you, my dear friend, this man was in a predicament. And oh, my, may I say to you, listen, you find yourself here today in a predicament, don't know how in the world you're going to be able to get out of it. Oh, but I'm thankful that God has been able to give you and I an answer. Amen. Oh, I'm glad that there is faith and hope in the yeah. Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. I want you to notice, my dear friend, not only do we see the man's predicament, but I want you to notice in verse number 9, notice Paul's preaching in verse number 9. The Bible says, back up in verse 8, the Bible says, And there sat a certain man in Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Here it is. The same heard Paul speak. <laughs> the, sa the same individual began to listen to the preaching of the man of God. Amen. Somebody said one time, they said that preaching was dead. My dear friend, I want, I want to make the, set the record straight, amen? Preaching is not dead, but preaching is big business to God, amen? And may I say to you, listen, I have heard some dead preaching in my life. Somebody say amen. But thank God preaching within itself, thank God, it is not dead, amen? I'm glad, thank God, of the, of the man of God who will read his text, step back three feet, and just let God use him, amen? I'm thankful, my dear friend. Listen, I listened to Brother Jeff this morning as he began to weep, my dear friend, and let's turn up this morning about what he had to hear about us no longer. Thank God being orphans. May I say to you, listen, it caused me to get my white hanky out and wave it this morning, my dear friend, because there was another man of God who was excited, thank God, about what God had done in his life. Amen. Oh, may I say to you, when I begin to think about preaching, my dear friend, listen, have you ever thought about the miracle working power? of just one simple sermon, what it can do in the life and heart of somebody if they'll just listen. May I say to you, the trouble will be consoled, the bereaved can be comforted, the committed can be challenged, the indifferent can be comforted, and thank God the sinner can be converted all because of what the power of one sermon will be able to do in their heart and their life. I think about what Dr. Harold Seidler said many, many years ago. He wrote a little booklet entitled Preach On. And in the back of that little uh, book, he wrote about preachers just preaching and taking the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and preaching it regardless of what other people had to think or say. And this is what he had to say in his little article. He said, if you're preaching from the Bible, he said, if you're longing for revival, he said, preach on. Preach 
preach on sin and condemnation, preach on sinners, his salvation, preach to Christians consecration, but preach on. He said, if your sermon's from the Lord, he said, preach on. Never mind if somebody looks bored. He said, just preach on. He said, if the devil looks down on it and the critics begin to frown upon it, he said, many souls depend upon it. So preacher, preach on. He said, if you step on somebody's cards, he said, take the bull right by the horns and preach on. Amen. Even though they may not like it, even though some try to fight it, when there's wrong, the Lord can right it. So preach on. He said, let not time be a restriction. Preach on. If a sinner's got conviction, he said, preach on. He said, Christ can save his soul from hell, cleanse his heart, and make him well. It's after 12. He said, preach on. Amen. He said, from the law of revelation, preach on. Christ, for every situation, preach on. Even if your members doubt it and say they can do without it, if you've talked to God about it, then preach on. He said, think of Christ's own message clear. Therefore, all who wish to hear, just preach on. All our sinners, they must know that his blood did freely flow. It can wash them white as snow. So preach on. In the Holy Spirit, on. He'll reward you in his hour, so preach on. Broken hearts and sins forgiven, blessings here so freely given, and a crown up there in heaven. Hey, preach on. Preach on. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Thank God Paul decided he was going to walk in that building that afternoon and thank God he was going to preach the word of God. May I say to you, my dear friend, it's not going to be Reader's Digest that's going to help you, amen? It's not going to be the Declaration of Independence that's going to help you, amen? It's not going to be the, the uh, article that's in the newspaper that's going to help you, amen? But thank God, my friend, the preaching of the Word of God. Listen, I love to sing. I love to shout. I love all of that, Brother Kenny. But may I say to you, in order for your faith to grow, you've got to have the faithful exposition of God's Word sown into your life. So Paul began to preach the word of God. The same man began to listen to what the apostle Paul had to say. But I want you to notice in the third part of the text, Paul's perception. Notice what the Bible says. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. Oh, may I say to you, listen, I'm thankful. Hallelujah, my dear friend, that this man, when the Bible tells you and I that he's steadfastly beholding him. In other words, the word of God, when we look and think about the word steadfastly, it means to gaze. It means to focus in on intently. So the Bible tells you and I that Paul began to perceive, he began to look at this man, and he understood and realized that this man was sitting on the edge of his seat for the first time in his life. There was something, my dear friend, that he was able to put his stakes into. Amen. Yeah. There's something, my dear friend, that he heard for the first time that helped him to prop up, thank God, and pay attention. Amen. I'm thankful for the man of God, hallelujah, that gave me some hope uh, all the way back in 1979. Amen. As he preached the word of God and yeah. told me that I needed Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hey, I have heard a lot of things. I have heard a lot of different philosophies, but faith from the night that the man of God preached the word of God that I might be able to come to the realization that I was lost without God in need of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, may I say to you, we hear one sermon right after another, yet, my dear friend, we're just like this man. We remain unchanged. We continue, my friend, to be crippled up and broken down, set, my dear friend, with the result that there's no way, no how, that God is ever going to be able to take care of my circumstances. Well, The songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust a sweeter name, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Amen. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all on the ground. Thank God, it's sinking sand. May I say to you, listen, Paul began to realize that this man's focus had begun to change. Yeah. He was preaching the word of God. He perceived in his spirit, my dear friend. He looked at this man, saw him sitting at the edge of his seat. 
And thank God for the first time in his life, he was hearing something that was going to change his life. Oh, as I begin to think about this man, my dear friend, I'm thankful to thank God no longer was he focusing on his dilemma, amen? No longer was he focusing on his disease. No longer was this man focusing on his disability, amen? Thank God, my dear friend, no longer was he going to allow those crutches to be able to prop him up, amen? But my dear friend, he was hearing something for the first time. Thank God that he could get some help and some hope, amen? Again, Barack Obama ran his presence on hope and change. Amen. But may I say to you, thank God I'm glad that my hope is in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God. Amen. May I say to you tonight, this, this, there was something triggered in this man's eyes. His heart began to flutter for the first time. Amen. The word of God tells you and I in the text, it says the first time the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. I want to ask you a question tonight. What is it that you are hearing here this morning? What is it that you have heard in sermons gone by? My dear friend, that has caused you to prop up and pay attention for a few moments. I think, my dear friend, that it could be your night to be able to get some hope. Yeah, yeah. Could it be, my friend, that you have walked in this building here today and you thought you were going just through another service here today? But maybe God is beginning to speak to your heart. And God wants to show you, my dear friend, that he can deliver you out of your alcoholism, yeah. that he can deliver you out of yeah. your pornography, that he can deliver you out of your yeah. drugs. Yeah. My dear friend, listen, that he can deliver you out of the sin and the lifestyle, my dear friend, that you are living currently right now, that God can save you and that God can set you free. The question I've got for you here this morning is, do you have the faith yeah. to be healed? Yeah. Do you really believe that God can do something for your life here today? I want you to notice in closing, I want you to notice the payoff that took place in verse number 10. Notice, if you will, the Bible says, Paul said with a loud voice, he said, stand upright on my feet. The Bible says, and he leaped. Yeah, that's right. And he walked. Yeah. <laughs> he leaped. Yeah. And he walked. Could you just see the picture? Can you just imagine that old boy just sitting there at the edge of his seat for the first time in his life? Yeah. Man, he's hearing something, my dear friend, that will change him forever. Yeah. But you know what I believe? I believe that just before Paul told him that, there's no doubt in my mind that possibly he was looking at those old crippled legs one more time. Looking at his situation, taking a look at them crutches one more time. Wondering if he was going to be able to get up. Paul told him to get up. Paul told him to stand upright on his feet. I wonder if he had any doubt in his heart and his mind. You know, there's many of you that sit here today, my dear friend, and you hear the man of God tell you that if you'll just come to the Lord, that God will be able to take care of it. That God will be able to take care of the situation that you're in. But my dear friend, you're kind of like this fellow. You're sitting there and you're looking at your situation. And you start asking yourself this question. I know the man of God is telling me to get up. I know the man of God has encouraged me from the word of God to tell me that God will take care of my problems. And that God will take care of my circumstances. But you continue to look at your situation. And you begin to think in your mind, what if I do try to stand up? What if I fall back down? Yeah. What if I fall flat on my face again? What happens if I uh, fall down in front of everybody? They're going to laugh at me. They're going to ridicule me. They're going to mock me. But I want you to know, my dear friend, that's exactly what the devil wants you to think here today. Yeah. See, the devil, he is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I promise you, he does not want you to get right with God. He wants you to continue, my dear friend, to set in the misery and the pain and the suffering that you're dealing with here today. But I want you to know, my friend, there is hope Amen. in the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. question yeah. I've got for you today is will you stand yeah. up and will you leap and will you walk? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Can't you see that, man? Oh, I bet you sitting there rubbing those legs, looking at those crutches, looking at what the man of God's got to say. Yeah. My dear friend, it took an act of faith for him to finally get up from where he yeah. was at yeah. Yeah. and begin to put into practice what he believed. My dear friend, listen, when that boy stood up, I want to tell you something. <laughs> he did not do this. He did not say, hey, Paul, thanks for coming by and seeing me. Take it easy, buddy. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Let's go ahead and start. No, no, no. I want you to take a look at it one more time. And I want you to read the text. Look what it says. He said with a loud voice, he said, stand upright on my feet. And the Bible says that he leaped and he walked. Amen. Yeah. May I say to you, when that Boy finally realized, thank God that he had been.
Father in heaven, we love you. 